afternoon at Standard. My husband, Paul, we own Fortuna's Sausage Company, an Italian market right down the street in Manchester, right on Main Street. <laughs> Let's get cooking. Tonight we're going to have a pasta fest. We're making a few different pastas, a few different sauces to show you everything on how to go perfect. Okay, so we're going to start with our pasta casalinga. If you want to start chopping this, Paul, we have our copa. We're a sausage company. We make all of our own Italian sausages and salami. So, of course, everything we're doing tonight mainly has Italian sausage in it. Would you so, like this to be julienne? Yeah, julienne is perfect. Okay, great. And so we're going to cook up our Italian sausage, put a little olive oil. These recipes are all on our website, and I think you have some little handouts here. So we're using sweet Italian sausage today. I brought my grandmother's wooden spoon with me because it comes with me everywhere I go. For good luck. For good luck. It's probably well over 100 years old. So we're going to do the Italian sausage. And this sauce has to, it's a really fast sauce. And you can cook this the day before. It tastes so much better the day before, actually. Um, I've given this as Christmas gifts. People just love this sauce. It's a little bit of everything. Casalinga means homemade. So with that said, it's basically everything but the kitchen sink. So today we're putting the Italian sausage, excuse me, and we're also julienne some of our salamis. All of our salamis are all natural, no nitrates, no preservatives. We have Genoa, Supersada, and Calabrese in there. Yeah, we sure do. And we're just gonna brown that up. You know, I'm gonna add a little more garlic. You can never have enough garlic. Never, never, never. <laughs> And as we're doing it, we take the sausage out of the casings and we're just breaking it up as it is cooking here a little bit. This pan, is my electric frying pan, is the perfect size for this recipe. I use this pan for every single time I make it. Every single time. Okay, we're ready for that if you want to drop that in, Paul, the copa. I'd be glad to. Our copa was voted the best American made, so after Italy, we're number two. Not a bad place to be. Thank you, thank you. We take a lot of pride in what we make. Do, are you smelling this? It's smelling good. I smell the garlic. Yeah, and you want to grab the tomatoes, Paul? We have the tomatoes there. Okay. So I use San Marzano tomatoes, so they're plum tomatoes. I keep them whole. I kind of break them a little bit when we're putting them in the... Do you want me to um, pour them in? Yeah, you can pour them in now. Maybe it could have cooked a little bit longer, but this is TV, so we're going we're gonna to make it fun. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Perfect. So San Marzano tomatoes is a region in Italy. They make the best plum tomatoes. I'm sure you're all familiar with them. And... The very end, just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. This takes probably about 20 minutes to make, 25 minutes. That's after it's everything is uh, julienne ready, of course. But it definitely tastes better the second day. It does, doesn't it? Yes. Paul's father. That's all he wants for requests Christmas. Requests this for Christmas <laughs> presents. He gets four quarts. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just going to put the heat up a little bit. And again, this is everything here is pretty much cooked. It was just these Italian sausage that we needed to brown up. Um, but everything else besides that is already cooked. So it's just letting all those flavors blend together, get that aroma, the taste, the true taste of Italy for sure. Um, and then what we're going to do, again, this is so simple. That's why we're doing four different sauces tonight and four different pastas. Um, speaking of pastas, this one is wonderful on a fettuccine. Tonight we're having it on homemade rigatoni. So the meat and the cheese gets inside the rigatonis. Nothing better. I don't know if you've had rigatonis before, but they are the best with this sauce. Right? It will is be that able your to favorite? Soak up the sauce and it will fill the rigatoni. Absolutely. Right. And but you can make it with fettuccine, you can make it with anything you'd like. But I like the pastas that catch the, the sauce. Okay. okay, so this is going to just sit and cook for a little while longer. We're going to add the um, artichokes. Okay. So are. these are just baby artichokes, um, not in olive oil. So I rinsed them. They were just a can of artichokes. In water. In water. And I rinsed them. And we're just going to place them in the bowl. And peas. 
I always use frozen peas because they are the best They're, when it comes to for, for this dish. They hold their color they and they hold, hold the their color, flavor. They hold the color exactly in the flavor. Of course, if you have garden fresh, that's always good too. But ours have gone by already. Oops. Oh, we've got more in the I garden I think I for kind of fall. overflowed this <laughs> pot a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Okay, can we get those scallions in? I think we can. When there's a will, there's a way. There you go. So we're just going to let this sit for a while while we start making the next. We're going to do a pasta um, with cavatelli. And do you want to grab that stuff out, Paul? I sure will. And we're just going to keep stirring here. It's going to fill the room up with the great smells. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So on this one here, this is a cold pasta salad. So on this one here, we've already cooked our pasta, which is cavatelli, which is my personal favorite. Orchetti is really nice with this one also. We have fresh gar um, broccoli, I'm sorry. This fresh, did come from our garden. Fresh broccoli from the garden <laughs> that I steamed, chopped up really fine. And then we're using our Sandgate Italian sausage. Sandgate's a little town we live in here in Vermont. And we, what we put inside of that one is a little bit of Romano cheese. A little bit of orange zest and a little bit of lemon zest also. Paul's the sausage master. He makes all the sausages. <laughs> so he knows any question you need to ask of sausage and salami, you ask Paul. Um, so we're going to put it all together. And again, the um, cavatelli's are already cooked. So we're going to add a little bit of fresh garlic, like a whole tablespoon, actually. It's not a little bit. And we're going to add our Italian sausage. Do you want to add some of that um, broth there, too, while I'm adding this? And we'll just keep mixing Certainly. it in. Thanks. We like to use a chicken broth. And not too, too much, because we're making this as a salad. If you wanted this as a, a hot meal, you can do it as a hot meal also which we've done before in the winter time at home. Which is really nice. Just mix that garlic all in here very well. Um, you could add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, garlic powder in here. I know it's not really a true Italian thing to add, but garlic pepper in here is really good. It gives it a really nice flavor. This smells great. And I think, again, I overdid, but let's see. We're just going to put this in here, too, the broccoli. And, Paul, can you add some of that grated cheese, too? A hefty too. amount of grated cheese. Oh, oh why not put it Go all for in? it. Go <laughs> for it all. Go for it all. <laughs> Can no. we ever have too much grated cheese? No. no what is this? Uh, Lucatelli? Is <laughs> it? That is the Lucatelli Romano Pecorino. And now the trick is going to be mixing this. And now, again, the, the pasta here has all these little nooks and crannies in it. The olive oil gets in there. The garlic gets in there. It is, can you smell it? It smells so good here. It smells so, so good. And we have a nice bowl here we can see right through. And this is a wonderful dish to take on picnics when, over the summer to people's homes. Or again, just pop it in the oven and heat it up and it's ready to go. And this is something that you can make a day ahead of time easily also. And I it think holds I need up a fantastic. little more chicken broth. Okay. So we add the chicken broth just to give it a little more texture. And a little flavor. Oh, you know what we forgot to add? Olive oil. Ah. <laughs> We're going to add a little bit of olive oil. It's never too late. We use a really good olive oil from Italy. You can see the color. It's beautiful. And then after this one, we're going to be making the most simplest little pasta sauce you've ever had with so much flavor. Tell them a little story behind that one. We were traveling in Italy, um, near Bergamo, Italy, actually. And Which is northern Italy. Northern Italy. And we were a little bit to the east of that, towards, towards the Italian Alps. And we were staying at a, um, at a hotel that had a very nice restaurant. And we had this pasta dish there that was just to die for. The, the flavor of the sauce was like, not like something that we'd ever tasted before. 
and the chef was kind enough to kind of give us some of the secrets that they utilized when they made that. And we were borrowing that, and you folks will be able to taste that here tonight. It's <laughs> but you're going to so be simple. surprised. I've never heard of this until a couple years ago when we were there traveling. And I never put, I'll give you the secret ingredient, it's butter, in a spaghetti sauce. A pasta sauce, yeah. And so anyhow, we're just going to put this one right here. Got it going? Great. Perfect. And I think this is coming along great, too. Yeah, that is great. It smells. And back to this one, too. I forgot. We could have decorated the top with a little bit of olives just for some prettiness. There we go. And I've got some roasted and peppers, you, too. Yeah, you did roasted peppers. Paul loves roasted peppers, so we added a little roasted peppers. Let me just get those on here for you, too. Oh, put them all, right? Why not? There we go. <laughs> And you can see how it just dressed it right up. That looks it's beautiful. outstanding. Great. It's beautiful. And it's going to taste even better. So the next dish, like I said, we're going to make is this wonderful pasta sauce. The pot is on on a medium heat. We're going to add a whole, that's a stick of butter. It's an Italian butter, so it's a little bit different. Non-salted. And then a whole onion, not even cut. Just the whole onion into the pot. Passata, which is a puree Italian tomatoes. Perfect. How's that coming along good? Really great. And I don't know if you've ever had Roma tomatoes or not, but these are baby cherry tomatoes that are so delicious. Italian. Italian cherry tomatoes. Did I tell you that we've got those going in the garden too? You do, I know. <laughs> I picked a few already. You did. Perfect. You take that away. And then this sauce is just going to cook. I don't know if you can zoom in here and see that. Get that onto the camera there so you can see that whole chunk of butter and the whole onion. And this is going to cook for probably about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, and just let it cook and simmer at a nice low pace. When we're ready to serve it, we're going to take that whole onion out. You can discard the onion or you can just cut it up. It's delicious. Cut up after it's cooked for a while. It's wonderful. And then the butter will melt and it makes a really nice creamy sauce. And what we're going to do with this one today is we're going to put it with gnocchi. So gnocchi are little potato gnocchi. So we're going to do that one with the gnocchi today. So it's going to have another nice, it's going to absorb the flavors. It's going to absorb the sauce mm. and just be nice and creamy and silky and velvety once it's all cooked. And those little cherry tomatoes will pop in your mouth once you're taking a bite of them. So this is going to be what the sauce looks like after we're all done. And again, so silky. And we're going to serve that over the gnocchi. So move that one on. See how fast these sauces are all taking? I mean, a matter of I don't know how many minutes, it's very quick. But we've made three different pasta sauces. So you can make three different pasta sauces, have a little party, have a little dinner party like we're having tonight um, in your own kitchen. And you can make the three different, or three or four different pastas, different sauces, and just have a little smorgasbord of pastas, which everybody loves pasta. Excellent. OK. So the last one we're going to do is going to be the time consumer here. So I'm going to move these things out of our way. And don't mind, we're just going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with you. OK, welcome back. We've gotten regrouped here, and now we're going to make bucatini carbonara with guanciale. Why don't you explain what guanciale is? Guanciale is a whole muscle. It's the cheek of the pig. Um, what we do is we cure it like we do our copa or like a prosciutto is done. This is the guanciale. And it is the, this one is seasoned with a little bit of oregano and a little bit of garlic. It's dry, cured, and aged for about 60 days. Um, it has a distinct flavor. And we were recently in Rome, Italy, and we walked by this little teeny restaurant, and there had to have been a line about 20 people deep waiting to get in. Uh, the next day, we went back. And we actually had the best carbonara that we had ever tasted in our lives. Um, it was just fantastic. And you're going to be tasting tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and they used the gu guanciale. <laughs> and guanciale, is, it's almost like a bacon in a way. It's like a pancetta in a way. It's not smoked. It's not smoked. Correct? No, no, it's just dry cured. And we're working on a, uh, formulating a new pancetta. 
Most people in America are used to a rolled pancetta. Uh, the pancetta that we're going to be making is going to be very similar to this. It looks like bacon, but it'll be dry cured. And we're going to be rubbing it lightly with uh, Calabrese peppers. But we're working on it right now, our first test batch at our facility. And hopefully we'll have that available very shortly. For people who don't know exactly what we do, we're, we own a sausage company. We're a sausage manufacturer. I'm third generation, so these are recipes that my grandparents brought over from Italy, from Calabria, Italy, over 100 years ago, 130 years ago, actually. So we, we're taking those recipes, we're making them in today's day and time, no nitrates, no preservatives, same way that my grandparents made them over 100 years ago. We were fortunate enough to go to Calabria last year, actually this past year also, and learn and see some of the, go behind the scenes of some of the sausage companies and makers in Italy and share our secrets and our trades and their secrets and their little hints and helpful hints. And it's really been a great, great travel experience for us. Um, we just love it, love it. And Calabria is a very warm, special spot in our heart. So this we're going to cook until the fat is coming out of here. So it's going to be I don't know if you can see or not, but the fat is coming out. It's almost like an extra oil in here. Some, somewhat translucent. Yeah. And it's getting translucent. We do not want it to brown. You can brown it if you'd like, but I think it personally it loses some of the flavor. So we just like it translucent, right? Yes. Is that the word we're looking for? Translucent. Like, like an onion. When the onion is cooked, it mm -hmm. turns translucent. Again, my nani's. Wooden spoon. And the secret to this, the most carbonaras that you'll have in restaurants, they use cream. The true traditional carbonara is not cream. It's used with egg yolks, which by the way, if you want to start whisking those up. These are so, from our chickens. These are from our chickens. <laughs> it's perfect. So, but the, the traditional way to make it is without cream. So it is with just the egg yolks, some cheese. Today's cheese we're going to use is a pecorino pepato which is a pecorino cheese with peppercorn, whole peppercorns in it. This is a very peppery dish, so we are going to be grinding up some fresh um, pe uh, peppercorn, sorry. And pecorino so, is made from sheep's milk. Right, right. So it has a distinct flavor to it. And we add pasta water to this. So I've cooked the bucatini earlier today, but we're all, I saved the pasta water. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the pasta water little by little. You'll see as we're going along. And you can see as we're making the sauce, it's going to get creamier and creamier and creamier. The more water we add, you reheat it, add a little more water to it. I keep it in the refrigerator. It's fine. We're going to add some of the pasta. How are those eggs? Good. Oh, beautiful. Yep. Can you take some of the cheese and add probably about half of that cheese to it? Not the piece here. Just to the eggs? To the egg mixture and just stir it on up. Okay. And bucatini is a spaghetti with a nice big hole right down the middle. To soak up the sauce. Kind of have, it's a slurpy kind of a pasta. You need to slurp it up. It doesn't want to get on your fork. I used to always think that carbonara was so bad for me because where I grew up in Connecticut, they always added cream and heavy cream and milks and lots of butters. And this doesn't have anything like that in there. So we're just getting the pasta nice and hot. Looks good just the way it is. It sure does. It smells, it? It smells great. <laughs> so now Paul has whisked the eggs and the, the egg yolks only egg yolks in there, egg yolks and the cheese too. It's almost a nice, like a thick paste, like a pancake mix, I would say. Yes, very similar. And what we're going to do is we're going to slowly add that in here and constantly keep mixing it because we don't want the eggs to scramble. We want it just to make a creamy texture and we're going to be also keep adding the pasta water. So again, we don't want those eggs to scramble. And again, you want the pasta to be a nice sturdy pasta like this one because all the handling that I'm doing, you don't want it to break up in little pieces. And it was cooked a la dente, which means it was cooked perfect to the taste, so it's a little tender to the taste. Perfect. One more or is that Yeah, good? another one, please. Okay. This is worth the wait and it's worth the work. Basically like a risotto where you're sitting there stirring it constantly. Okay. 
I think we need a little more egg. Okay. <laughs> going to have you run in circles. I'm going to come on this side of you. This okay. side? Okay, sure. Do you want the... Good. Yep, for now. This smells so good. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Everything smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a slow process, but it's worth the wait. And you need to keep it on that low heat, too, because if you don't put it on the low heat, you're going to scramble those eggs. It's going to burn. It's going to brown the uh, guanciale. So you need to be patient mm. and cook with love. Okay, we'll take a little, the rest of that cheese. Okay. Sprinkle it all around would be great. Mm. Can't have enough cheese. And <laughs> I think we've said that a couple times. <laughs> and a little more of that water, please. Okay. Right. Probably a couple ladlefuls would be good. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is a Parmesan and Romano Pecorino blend. When we cook like this at home in our kitchen, usually we have everybody standing all around us, everybody's pitching in and doing things. Everybody it's has a glass great. of wine. Everybody has a <laughs> glass of wine or a drink in their hand, soda, whatever. And it's always so much fun. And this is a great way to share cooking chores. And Why don't you talk to them about the antipasto that we made up too? The any well, pasta was a, a variety of our sliced cold cuts or sliced uh, meats that we manufacture. Our plant is over in Gloversville, New York. Um, to manufacture our products the way that we do and to distribute and to do mail order, we have to be under USDA government regulation. So there's a federal inspector in our plant every single day. Um, it makes it hard, but it also makes it very good and very stringent to make sure that what we're s serving to you family, friends, is safe. And uh, that is the, the crucial key thing. Not every plant, because we don't use nitrites and nitrates, it's not easy to do, it's time consuming. Um, for instance, this is our, our super sata salami. This is sweet super sata. And if we were to use nitrites and nitrates, we could have this in and out in about 30 days of the plant. But, but tell them what the difference too between the super sata and soupy is. Everybody okay. always asks that question. Well, the, the, doing it all natural, this takes 90 days to make instead of 30 days if we use nitrites and nitrates. Super Sada is a traditional Italian salami, uh, mainly found in and around Rome, Bologna, and around that area. Supi is what we were noted for and famous for. Uh, Supi is a Calabrese style Super Sada. That's the original recipe my grandparents brought over from Italy in the early 1900s. It was short for Super Sada. Right, and they, just, they nicknamed it Soupy. And right. you'll still find people in certain pockets and areas around the country that are making this in their attics or in their basements around Christmas time when it's cold enough to do that. What we had to do is we had to come up with a way to uh, design a way to uh, manufacture it year round, which took us a little trial and error, but <laughs> yeah, we, got, sure we got there. <laughs> It sure did. But we just threw this antipasto together today make, just to show you how simple it is to make this Italian feast we're having today. Antipasto does not have to be this big elaborate thing. It can be plain and simple like ours is today here. We have our different sliced meats, olives, cheeses, peppers, and, and the salamis. So you don't need to have marinated mushrooms and this and that. It's wonderful to have them, but you don't have to. The, the basics are simple and they're great. So we're going to take a few questions. Everything is just sitting here cooking. We're going to take a few questions, and then we're going to plate everything up, and we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we're back, and we're ready to answer. <laughs> we're ready to answer a few of your questions before we all get to have our dinner party. Anybody have a question? Sure. What was the total cooking time on that red sauce? What was the total cooking time on the red sauce? Yeah. Oh, the, co the cooking time on that one is only 20, 25 minutes. Um, that quick. It's basically until that onion is tender. Mm -hmm. So it cooks very fast. It's a light sauce. It's not your typical sauce. Okay. Good, good. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep, go ahead. I was wondering uh, about the use of uh, herbs like uh, basil and oregano. I, you didn't use that. It wasn't obvious that you used them, but I wondered, uh, is that a matter, a matter of taste uh, to add or not? To, a matter of the herbs that we did not use a lot of herbs in our cooking here today, absolutely. And Patty will answer that, but... Uh, yeah, we don't use a lot of herbs. Um, basically, it's not in these sauces that we made today. So that is the difference. So we do use a lot of basil at home, a lot of oregano at home. But in these dishes we made today, these pasta sauces, they're pretty basic and simple as Tuscany cooking is. Tuscan cooking is, is very plain and simple. The less ingredients, the more flavor it has. Anybody else? Sure. My mother was a great Sicilian cook. And on Sunday, when she made the sauce, it took hours and hours and hours. And we like the idea because the smell will permeate the apartment. <laughs> you said your sauce was for 20, 25 minutes. I got to take issue with that. <laughs> so before we have an argument, because I, I'm dying to go to the store, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I have to know, why did you, did you abbreviate the time? Well, the, your question was, why do we abbreviate the time to make the sauce? Um, and this, Patty will answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're First welcome. of all, we love Sicily, so we are very proud to be in your company. Yes. Um, but the sauce that you're talking about is the Sunday dinner sauce. Right. We also make that all. We make that also. So what we would do? This was a different sauce. This is a very quick, easy and light sauce. The Sunday dinner sauce is made usually with some meat as your base, whether meatballs or beef or sausage. Or pork, pork or shoulder. Or pork, pork is one of our favorites. Um, and then you would add the tomatoes and the tomato paste and you let it simmer and cook all day. With the with, garlic and the oregano. With the garlic and the oregano is in that one for your herbs, um, salt and pepper, but and basil. But we, that is a totally different sauce. So. Right on with that question because that's, it's just a different type of sauce. And that's what we tried to show you here tonight on our little pasta fest, is how many different sauces you can make and how quickly you can make them. As you see, we did tonight in an hour or so, we've made four different pasta sauces. If I was to make that sauce that you're speaking about, it would have taken us all day. You guys would have had to come over, you would have had to have a relax, we would have had a few more appetizers, but anyhow, Thank you so much for coming. Thank we you. really, really appreciate Thank you. it. Salute. Cheers. Cheers.